excited. Feeling worn off yet, or are you still pretty excited? Um, I'm still pretty excited, but I'm mostly relieved. It hasn't really quite hit me yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet. Um, wow, I, I it, it's always shocking to see an, an 100 percent score of the portfolio. Yeah, I was I was in disbelief. <laughs> yeah, they don't build those out very often. Um, and even with, you know, this year, as you know, I think was an extremely high grading year with mm -hmm, international yeah. students being at 95 cutoff and domestic being at 89. So just, yeah, a really good year to do well. Let's just put it that way. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, so just, yeah, nothing, nothing to see on the score sheet, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, so first of all, uh, my first question is just, uh, what first drew you towards animation? What 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 captured your interest and made you think that you wanted to? You, because you've already been in university a little bit, right? And you kind of yeah yeah. Years. So tell us a little bit about your story. Um, I guess I always really liked art, and I there's not that many schools around here that really teach in industry art, mm -hmm. and Sheridan was the only one, I okay. think. But. I looked into the animation program and I thought there was some really great work and a lot of great um, students and professors. Yeah. So I was, because I'm originally not an animator or I wasn't necessarily going in for animation. Yeah. I'm more of a designer, I would yeah. say, but yeah. it kind of accounts for that as well. So I thought it was really interesting and I would learn a lot. So. Okay. Yeah. And meeting the peers, I think, is a huge thing, too, to kind of mm -hmm. have a, a nice camaraderie of, of classmates that are all oh, yeah. interested in fellow so artists. Yeah, yeah totally. Um, yeah, I mean, that's a great point. And that's really good that you know that, because I like a lot of people also go into it not necessarily thinking that they might want to animate. Because animate is almost like, with character animation at least, it's, it's mm -hmm. closer to, to acting. Well, I mean, it's, it's acting combined with drawing, obviously. Um, yeah, yeah. But for people that don't necessarily want to act and they just want to design and be a great artist, there's plenty there as well, right? You uh -huh, could do visual yeah. development, you could do character design, you could do prop design, layout design, whatever. There's so many different uh, mm -hmm. things that you can do. Um, so, so that's great. And, and knowing that going into it, you can be very uh, focused while you're in yeah, the yeah. and kind of like knowing exactly what you're going to be shooting for. Um, so that's really great. Uh, so yeah, that's that's awesome. Um, I'm just gonna go through the store, the the portfolio, if that's okay. And if there's yeah, okay. anything that you want to mention as we go about each thing, then feel free to mention it or or provide any tips uh, that you might have. Um, so we'll start with the first bit of the portfolio, which is the figure drawing. Um, yeah, yeah, okay. So, okay, so these are the longer ones. Yeah. Yeah. They're about, they took a, around like 15 to 20 minutes, I think, yeah. Okay, yeah, awesome. Great job, very great structure. Very, very obvious, like where all those landmarks are, the muscles versus the bones and the rib cage, and the, you've even got a twist, which is really nice. It's nice to see that kind of dynamic pose. Yeah, because when I see a lot of figure drawings, um, I think that sometimes there's, there's, a lack of gesture it's not the main focus of it but yeah. i think if you make it look more natural and yeah. um try to add some action mm -hmm. and some story to it it'll it'll help yeah that's great yeah and and what th these these totally fulfill that i love that i actually it's you touched on that with your naturalistic line it's really nice that it has this nice organic feel it's not like so some life drawing can get really rigid if you're making it look too boxy and too rigid. Um, yeah, but yeah. this has a nice natural flow to it um, from the hips to that line of the, the, the stomach and then flowing into the rib cage there. It, it feels very human. It doesn't feel like I'm looking at a robot that's yeah, resembling you. a human pose. So that's really great. And I think a huge thing with that is, is line confidence. Yeah. And that comes with doing a lot of life drawing. Yeah. And, um, not like making the small lines that kind of look fuzzy. Yeah. Because that can also, um, if you're focusing too much on on every tiny detail, yeah. then it'll really pull you back. Yeah, yeah, looking at the bigger forms. Um, what was your 
uh, life drawing practice like? Like, what did, you, did you, I guess you used online references like everyone else probably. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and how often and kind of how did you get to this level? Did you study anatomy as well separately or? Um, well, at first I did jump into anatomy. Um, I took courses from, uh, I, I believe, Aaron Blaze, who's an animator. And uh, there is this artist named Modern Day James that I also, he's really good for structure. Okay. And okay. Um, there's also, uh, I, I, I read the Bridgman Anatomy book. Oh, great. Yeah, so that one also really helped me with understanding primitive forms and yeah. how to layer it all together. So it's mm. really important, I think, for if you really want to get figure and gesture right to study and and learn your fundamentals of of anatomy and, and human figure. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, those are some really good references. Um, yeah, I mean, so it's you. You did step. You, you probably did the online croaky cafe or whatever, or maybe new master yeah. or something. But you also kind of focused on this dedicated study of learning, learning what's beneath the surface, not just the surface itself, which is really great. Yeah, and there's also a course. Um, uh, on schoolism, I believe, with um, Alex Wu, okay. and he, if you have a schoolism subscription, that is, um, you can take his course. And there's, he really runs through all of the, the, bit like the entire buildup of of gesture, kind of like line of action yeah. and silhouette and uh, shape. <laughs> oh, great! Yeah, that's awesome. And. Yeah, the huge emphasis here is is fundamentals. Because mm -hmm. even if you're self-taught, that's not to mistaken um, just sitting down and doing the practice. Because yeah. before you can put in the practice, you've kind of got to learn learn everything. And I know you guys also have like courses as or or courses that would probably help people more with yeah. like guiding them through, mm -hmm. which is always a better idea, I think to just kind of go for it and kind of hope for the best yeah, yeah that's great all right let's have a look at those hands um here they are oh yeah i remember your hands yeah i remember seeing your hands previously when we and i had that first portfolio review with you and i don't think i had like anything to say i might have maybe said one or two things but i was like wow this is fantastic these are really really expressive it, like these are all the kind of things that I would mention for students to do is to make each finger have a slight variation so that it doesn't feel kind of copied and pasted. Yeah. Um, very structural, but not like a huge, like not too much. You don't have let, you know, everything broken down, all these little tendons popping out everywhere. It's, it's more based around like focusing on making those knuckles look like knuckles and the skin and, and larger fatty bits looking like fleshy parts, not, you know, the same as bone. So everything feels very distinct here. And then we see this nice structure of the wrist. So really, really great job there. And I Thank love you. this because this, again, all, all of the really, the, the best hand drawings that I've seen look like you could basically animate between one and the second pose and it would work. So that's what it feels like here. I can totally imagine this moving. Um, that's just a really, yeah, really great hand drawings. And very and, simple in a way, like you've got, you know, yeah, yeah. just flooding it with lines. It's like you've just chosen the lines that you need. So yeah, really great. What were you going to say, Anne? Oh, um, of course, I'm going to have to caveat all of this with um, I'm I don't really have much experience as a student. So like take whatever I say with a grain of salt. <laughs> but with that being said, um, I think that a huge problem with a lot of hand drawings I see is is people will try to add structure like the underdrawing, but it doesn't really make sense. Like it's mm. just a bunch of lines. Yeah. And I think if you're going to add a structural drawing, which is, you know, generally a good idea to map out everything, um, it should make sense anatomically and you should understand, really understand the structure because they know if you don't know what yeah. you're doing. Yeah. Yeah. You can't just kind of throw a bunch of ellipses in there and then be like, yeah, all yeah. right, in my structure, yeah, it's not a box check off so much as something to really deeply mm -hmm. understand. Yeah, that's great. All right, the next thing I think is, uh, let's see, it's, uh, the, yeah, the character. <coughs> in, uh, oh yeah, I remember this character. Really, really fun. Yeah, wow. Again, just like, 
you even have a decent amount of like detail in terms of the drapery and the form of the cloth and whatnot, but it still feels just so incredibly consistent. I hope everyone watching this can see that this, you know, this could very well be a 3D model, like it, or or, or even a built maquette or something, you know, and some people do that to help <clears> themselves. <throat> um, but yeah, this is great. Did I even have anything to say about this? Maybe about this pose? <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh yeah, I had to fix some line quality things, but I did end up fixing that. Right. So, yeah. I've heard a lot of people, there was like, I guess some debate on whether you should add props or not. Yeah. And I think that it is kind of a risk because hmm. things can go wrong when you're turning, like it starts to complicate it. Oh, of but, course, I see what you Yeah. Mean. But yeah. if it really, I wanted to take that risk because it would add to the I guess the overall character design to it because it yeah. kind of adds some story and it does yeah yeah i so I, I also yeah. like it for that reason because you know otherwise you know your character could be i mean i i would maybe get the sense that he's like uh i don't know some maybe a baker with the with the apron or something but i wouldn't know mm -hmm. but you've got him holding popsicles and he's got a popsicle box so maybe he's like a, he's, he works at a dessert kind of uh uh, store or something like a little yeah. popsicle or ice cream or something you know so that's very clear it does add that extra level of personality because mm -hmm. you you want your character especially in animation to kind of be really lively yeah and it's not necessarily just about the costume design even mm -hmm. though that's ex important but it's also yeah like i said character design so yeah. you really want to feel for the characters mm -hmm. as like in a limited way because this is just like a turnaround yeah. and of course the most important things is i think definitely structure um and also studying like character shapes like you want things to make sense um of course on in an anatomy standpoint but also there's some videos out there and i was looking up and also studying from uh, I, I'm pretty sure the artist's name, uh, Wouter Tulp. Oh yeah, he's yeah. also from Schoolism. Mm -hmm. And you can really see um, all of the shapes that he uses and how they're, and also uh, Daniel Ariaga. If you just look at what they do and how they use shape design, yeah. And I think using those simple fundamentals will get you where you want to go. Yeah, that's great. It's nice that you had your your folks that you're kind of keeping your eye on and also that they weren't just other students portfolios but people that are actually in the industry you're kind of yeah. looking ahead to the kind of what is the what is the expectation of delivery for you know in a professional setting and delivering on upon that not necessarily just you know what the teachers might want to see or what other students are handling. yeah so that's really great um yeah love this character thank you yeah really really fun um all right let's see your short animation I was actually really surprised that I got perfect marks on this. <laughs> like, I really didn't like it, and I'm not someone who animates all that often. Yeah. But um, I tried to keep, like, a checklist of all, like, I, I wanted to cram as many, like, fundamentals of animation that yeah. I could. Yeah, yeah, follow no. through and squash and stretch and whatnot. Yeah, mm -hmm. I can see it for sure. It, I mean, the thing is, it, it's nice and simple and you only have four seconds really anyways right so yeah i mean i think like what can anyone really do with it? you're not going to do a whole scene of performance and acting you know so it's yeah it's going to be something simple and mechanical like this so i think yeah i think yeah it, it, you didn't bite off more than you could chew which is good for this kind of thing you don't want to like yeah you know, just make some kind of dramatic story because how simple it could be um, yeah and they liked it so that's that's yeah it's it's really about the emotion and the more simple you can make it the more like it's a lot it's going to be a lot more easy to actually do things right yeah because i see a lot of people try to do these really complex scenes mm -hmm. and it's very ambitious and a lot of like a lot of them they they have a lot of potential yeah but it's it's just so complicated that it just becomes completely like convoluted yeah. and difficult to follow yeah, it's one thing to make it complicated, perhaps like your character with the props and the, you know, mm -hmm. added drapery and whatnot. 
uh, to, to, to make it unique, but it's another to, yeah. to kind of overshoot the expectations of what you can actually deliver, especially for something like this or the storyboard where there's only four panels that you're really, uh, you've got to work with. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. There's, there's pretty intense limitations on that. It's not you know, yeah. worth fighting off a huge amount. Um, and I think another thing for the animation is I didn't realize this at first. Um, it's about like the timing of it because yeah. on the more technical side, um, depending on like which software you use or if you're doing it traditionally, yeah. um, you've kind of got to make certain areas longer and some shorter yeah. so it can show certain actions and it looks more more lively. Yeah. And yeah. That's nice. Yeah. Good, good advice for sure. Um, okay, so the next section is a uh, storyboard. Let's, okay, so that's your personal storyboard. That's different than... Um, um, okay, nice. Oh yeah, I remember seeing this, yeah. Awesome. That's great. Yeah, I like that final frame. Um, so, how, did it, what were your thought process for for this one? Um, one. I wanted to do a very. I did a few passes at this, mm -hmm. but I realized that the most simple story, um, because this is a, like a really short um, storyboard. That's kind of like also a beat board, I believe. Yeah, so, really. um, That's what it, is. <laughs> it would have to condense a lot of the story into just a few frames. So yeah. one, I think keeping the story simple and easy to follow. Um, and because your storyboards only going to be as good as your story, I guess you could say. Mm -hmm. And uh, another one is try to do multiple because you'll end up um, stumbling onto something better yeah and um which which number was this for you um i think this was like i think i took like four or five tries oh, wow okay yeah so like i did them fairly like i think a good thing to do is really have like a rough storyboard mm -hmm. so you can understand staging and i think um there's some videos on like youtube that you can find where there's like basic camera movements and um uh camera angles and yeah. types of shots so that's i think that's really important yeah. and um there's a course by uh, chris perrin and i believe he was actually a prof professor at uh, or a teacher at uh sheridan at okay. some point so um what's the course um storyboarding okay. with okay. chris perrin yeah Neat. and he really takes you through all of the, the like i'm gonna say it again how fundamentals yeah <laughs> and nice there's certain like a certain way you can sequence your shots that makes sense mm. and um yeah i think that's that's kind of about it yeah there's a, of course more to know but um yeah. off the top of my head i i don't really know that's great that you mentioned the the blo uh, staging and blocking videos uh on youtube because I, I i know of a few um that are really really great there's one by a guy named dan fox and uh nerd writer does some every frame of painting uh just to tag some of these folks down below as we mentioned them is there any that you in particular really enjoyed um well i think there's um there's one called studio binder and i think that's also an app as well okay but um yeah they have like a four-part series on um camera movements, angles, shots, and and all of those. Okay, awesome. That's great. Um, yeah, we're gonna have a whole bunch of resources for everyone to look up after this. Uh, okay, so personal perspective line drawings. So that's these two. I think we, yeah. Oh, actually, I don't remember seeing this one. This must have been... Yeah, I changed, I, I, I did a different one this time yeah. because I kind of like this one's composition better. It yeah, was a little sure. bit more easy to follow, you could say. Yeah, yeah, sure. You have a great like shorthand for vegetation and, and natural, like it's very, very, very easy to see this kind of, the, the kind of brush that this is versus, you know, the rocks 
and, and the water. Um, it all has a kind of different feeling to it, which is really great. And you've even added little bits of hatching here and there, just to kind of yeah. double up on emphasizing the form in the plane in which weight's kind of facing. Um, so that's really great. This is a really cool shaped building. Really neat. Yeah, I kind of wanted to take a boat and then like would flip that over as a building. <laughs> wow. So, that's yeah. ambitious. That's a that's a tough structure to figure out. Yeah, yeah it, it, it would have to be a very big structure to kind of be going back that far. But it's like this thin thing. So yeah, mm -hmm. really neat. Uh, and great characters here. Really great characters. Thank you. Very, very obvious and clear. Um, yeah, yeah, with I, my perspective line drawings, I kind of went out of, you know, the the known conventions of what I was supposed to do because um, I, I know there was a lot of people say that you need to have like even lines, mm. but just based on, I guess, my artistic style and sensibilities, um, I thought it would be a lot more expressive and it just didn't look right because every time I tried to do more even and mechanical lines, it would just be that look kind of mechanical. And, mm. and I guess a huge thing is there's like a certain level of risk, but it will help you stand out. And mm. as long as you know what you're doing yeah, and um, then I think you should be okay. Yeah. Do you, do you yeah. mean like in particular, like, kind of how the, these lines are clearly like free-handed they're they've got a little little wobbliness to them but it's like keeps it a yeah. little bit more alive not so like ruler straight mm -hmm. um, because you can do like really straight lines and stuff but i mm -hmm. didn't want to jeopardize the expressiveness and yeah. of the line yeah and another part of it was kind of adding lighting effects you could say because yeah. i didn't want to like don't I, I don't think it's a smart thing to do to um add too much value mm. to a painting or I mean the drawing um, because it might distract from yeah. the actual line work and they that's what they're there for that's but I think on point. a composition level it'll um, it'll help yeah with adding sure. some like more flat tones you could say mm -hmm. yeah yeah and also like whenever there is areas where there's more free-handed stuff like a little the, the vase over here or you know, little more organic things. It would, if you did have super straight razor sharp lines, it would do, yeah. be, be too off putting between the two styles and be kind of mm -hmm. like, yeah, I love this little scene though. I remember, I remember Thank seeing you. this and I was like, wow, what a clever, um, very different kind of setting. You know, a, a bank vault, a piggy bank, literally. Yeah, it's it's, it's very, very gimmicky, bank. but I hope they got it. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's awesome. Um, and it has a certain era to it as well. It feels like, yeah, I don't know, like, I don't know, mid-century, even 20th mm -hmm. century or something. So, yeah, really, really yeah. great. And I think really another great. thing is uh, just kind of on composition and detailing, mm -hmm. um, you kind of want to be, I didn't want to use too much hatching or too much, yeah, like, uh, line work because that, you can run into some trouble with, with that. But yeah. in certain areas that I wanted um, people to look, yeah. I added a little bit more detail yeah. Because you don't want to add detail everywhere because it'll just become yeah. really crowded. So yeah. if you just use things in limitation and try to consider composition mm. and where you want people to look yeah. um, is quite an important thing to do. That's great. And yeah, I, I think that's a really good point that like you did hatch occasionally, but it's not, it's never like extremely loud. If anything, Th this little design back here jumps out a little bit in terms of like, it, I, maybe it's just the darkness of the line or something. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like that, the hatching here is, is very soft. It's very mute. It just gives us the, the like, well, it's nice actually because you're doing the cross contour kind of hatching. So it lets us know kind of the general direction of that plane, yeah. um, you know, but then you also add a tone on top of it. So yeah, really, really great all Thank around and, and great story here. Um, all right, let's have a look at your your personal work. So, okay, so this is a personal storyboard. Oh yeah, I remember this one. Yeah, I wanted in, to include a storyboard because I know that um, it was it's such a big part of the um, of the actual uh, requirements, mm -hmm. and I wanted them to know that like I I know what I'm doing. Yeah. So, like, and I also really just really liked doing a storyboard as well. That's great. So, 
Yeah, there's not a lot of people that do like a full on storyboard like this. So this is really awesome. Yeah. And I think for personal work, um, <laughs> of course, try to include variety, but don't don't think about variety so much if it is at the cost of doing something that you're not necessarily comfortable with. Amazing. Yeah, I always That's, emphasize yeah. that. That's a really, really great point. Yeah, because a lot of people might add so much of things that they aren't really good at. So mm. yeah, like I, I would say everything about this, this um, portfolio, if you don't feel comfortable about it, even a little bit, just try and do it again. Yeah. Especially with your personal work, because this is kind of it's what you bring to the table. Mm. So you want to bring something that you're good at and something that sure. really makes you stand out. Yeah. I love these. This is such a great Thank page, you. like really, really fun and all very uh, unified color palette too, that you're using here, a slightly kind of muted color, but a uh, really nice, like rendering of it all. Yeah. Thank you. And these two, some house designs, some interiors, just really, really professional. Like I can totally imagine these out of a, an actual studio. Like often your, your work is just ready for a production. <laughs> Thank you. So Thank that's, you. that's awesome. Um, yeah, great work. So you, you really emphasize your, your digital work. Um, that's great, but it, it's funny cause you're, a lot of your digital work doesn't feel overly digital, which is in my opinion, a great compliment. I, I don't like, uh, you know, digital artwork that feels like it's using um, the yeah. shortcuts of digital painting, I guess, versus like the j just yeah, the yeah. general skill that would be required for traditional painting or digital painting. I think that's a great thing to to kind of focus on. Um, I think you might have some more too uh, here. Oh yeah, love these portraits, wow. Thank you. And I think sometimes it's a, it's a good idea to include a sketchbook because mm -hmm. it shows like how you think and it shows them that you like how much you draw and yeah. your, your thought process and it's a good way to show your skill level and how mm. you've grown and all of that yeah so and i would say also pick your best pieces yeah so nice. like don't just include everything yeah um i kept it quite short so i wouldn't you know overwhelm them Mm -hmm. So I include like 10 pages. You can add a little like more or less, but yeah, um, I think it's, really it's, it's not a bad idea to include a sketchbook. Yeah. And I like that you, you, you did a lot of interiors. You really seem to like, like, um, uh, set dressing, uh, like filling environments with things to give it a lot of personality. Um, these all feel very vivid. It's not like, you know, it's not just a generic, like brand new condo that was just made. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. This is like, a very lived in kind of place and kind of going back to how this relates to um the perspective line drawings mm -hmm. um don't be afraid to add things in your environments because that'll give them life and and it really just shows them that you know how to place things um in a space in perspective yeah yeah yeah, even these objects are really, really awesome. Oh yeah, okay, cool. I love that you did this. It's almost a 3D modeler type thing to do. Was this one of the, uh, was this encouraged by a schoolism course or I, I know there's oh, yeah, some yeah. exercises. It like was that. a Jonathan Hardesty one. Oh yeah. And it was um, understanding textures. Yeah, yeah, really great one because getting to know this, I mean, great for a digital artist like yourself, but also great for 3D artists that are trying to yeah, yeah, yeah. Assign surfaces to different forms so that, you know, it doesn't look like the wrong material. That happens mm -hmm. all the time yeah. in kind of amateur production. So um, to kind of get a sense of the specularity and the, the kind of fall off of the light and all that stuff. It's, I couldn't believe the amount of nuance that there is to this before doing some 3D work. So yeah, it's, yeah, it's, really it's really fun. complicated. And like, it was, it was a very hard process to, to do all of this, but yeah. once you get it down, yeah. it'll uh you'll just have kind of an eye for it i guess mm -hmm. so for the schools and courses by the way did you do the thing the sort of netflix version of it where you just pay monthly and you can kind of watch and do as much as you want or did you actually do the one-on-one -on -one mentorships oh i uh, can't afford the one-on-one -on -one mentorships yeah, so i did pricey. do the subscriptions well, and i always think it's a good idea to have like a mentor 
And yeah. I think like going to a portfolio school or um, um, someone like a like a teacher or something would, would really help. Yeah. But um, unfortunately, I did not really have that because I was was just taking courses. Yeah. They're, and they're a lot trying crazy. to just like shoot blindly. So yeah, for sure. No. Yeah, I wouldn't really recommend that because it's always good to have a mentor if you can. Yeah. So, yeah. Nice. Really great variety of work here. Um, is there anything? Okay, this one. Oh, yeah, these ones. I love these ones. These little trolley cars that you built. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then a futuristic version. Yeah, it's nice because you have a lot of stuff that feels like it's from a certain like older era, which has a lot of character. But then yeah. you've also done some new architectural things too. And it also has a lot of characters. So that's really great. Because sometimes new stuff can be feel very like personality-less. But these yeah. these actually it's almost like an art deco-y kind of feel to it. That is yeah, because I think that to make like um things with personality, there's like there's you it's always very nostalgic and, and more relatable if you pull from certain elements of the past. Yeah. So that's true. yeah yeah awesome um okay well wow thanks for get, letting us see your whole portfolio Anne. oh um, thank you and uh any any last minute to sort of tips to like if you were going to do this process from scratch again without knowing all, everything you know now what tips would you give to somebody that's just starting with their portfolio for next year um i think for because on a more personal note, like I applied a the year before um, when I, I I was quite late to applications, yeah. um, and uh, that year I got like a fifty five, so oh, it was wow. really great. But it's the amount of growth if you do put in the work um, can be quite incredible, you could say, and um, yeah. it's 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 really quite a difficult school to get into, so. Yeah you've got to be willing to put in the work because yeah. there's going to be people who are, are willing to. Mm -hmm. And um, a huge thing that I, it's kind of like a broken record at this point, like I keep on saying fundamentals. Mm. And yeah, whether you go and curate your own courses to do that or go to a school to learn some simple fundamentals, yeah, um, you'll, you'll be like, you'll know what you're doing. Yeah. and they can see that and they will you'll be on your way to, to getting into sheridan or and being successful in any other uh, path that you're going to mm -hmm. that's great how, how how early did you start your portfolio this year um well i started working on personal work at first like probably in the summer mm. before um actually doing the the portfolio yeah. i mean uh, actually knowing the requirements to do the portfolio yeah. so a lot of it is a, is practice and learning and when you really get to it and you know what you're doing and you know the fundamentals you can get through it like fairly quickly like it's definitely going to get go, like going to take time yeah. and don't rush it and start early and try to get in some work every day yeah and um i think trying to start as early as possible like just in terms of practicing and um learning you should start that like like just whenever you can which is as early yeah. as possible as soon as you watch this video and you're yeah. inspired <laughs> yeah awesome especially life drawing i would say yeah like, of course. it's really get that in early yeah because you're going to get through like plenty of books like i went through probably like th uh 400 pages i would say wow and like it's it's really really difficult to do and i probably hurt a lot of trees in the process <laughs> so uh but it's it's really important to to start as early as possible when it comes yeah. to figure drawing and i know that other students will probably tell you that as well yeah yeah for sure everyone says that like whatever time you think you need to start put two months before that and start then yeah uh, yeah 
Yeah. Okay. Well, awesome. Thanks so much, Anne. All right. Uh, thank great you. Great to see your portfolio and congrats on the 100% score. Thank you. Uh, Sheridan should send you like some kind of badge for of honor for the <laughs> great score. Um, uh, and good luck next year. Thank you. You'll, you'll clearly fit in very well. Oh, thanks for your help and for doing this. It's it's really appreciated. Thank you.